CBC interview, August 17th, 2015. Welcome to Maritime Noon. I'm Jonna Brewer, filling in for Norma Lee McLeod. Family fun at the amusement park becomes a family nightmare. Look at all I get hit repeatedly and she was flung around. Like, like my sister said, like a rag doll. A mother watches in horror as her daughter falls out of a ride in PEI. We'll hear her story and then get a response from the park. Later in the show, if you're a birder, you know the thrill of spotting something new. As they take off, you hear the whistling of their wings, you know, so I, I look, and sure enough, I spot these two white bars in the wings of one of them, and my heart started racing at that point. <laughs> what birds have you spotted this summer? Call in and tell us about it. This is Maritime Noon. It was supposed to be a fun family outing for the Forest family of Nova Scotia. Last week, they visited the Sandspit Amusement Park in Cavendish, PEI, as they do every year. But Joan Forrest says the fun turned into a family nightmare when her 15-year-old daughter was flung from one of the rides. We've reached Joan Forrest at her home in Hammonds Plains. Hello. Hi. How is Leah today? Uh, Leah's still sleeping. We got in late last night. Uh her legs were all swollen last night, so I'm concerned about that. So we're taking her into the doctor. She's got scraped up and bruised up. But other than that, they did x-rays and an ultrasound, and miraculously, there was no internal bleeding, no broken bones. For me, it was a miracle from what I witnessed. I thought for sure something far worse would have occurred. So describe what happened exactly. Well, we're vacationing in PEI as we do every year. And one of the favorite places for my children to go to is Sands Pit. They went to go on this ride, the rock and roll ride. So my daughter, Leah, went on one side with her friend, Mitchell. On the other side was my other daughter, Brianna, and her friend, Chandler. And... Uh, my two other daughters went on the same ride, but probably two or three cars down. I always take pictures. Everybody that knows me knows how much I take pictures. The ride flips around, and each of the cars go around in a circle, and the kids get flipped upside down. So I told my sister to come in back so we could see them really good and so that I could take pictures. So they were going around, and, you, you know, it's almost like a blur. So I was just snapping pictures. And um, I don't have a 100% clear memory whether I saw it through my camera lens or it was when I lowered my camera. But the next I see is my daughter getting flung into the car. My husband on the other side said he saw her head get hit twice. And he jumped up immediately and yelled to the operator to stop the ride. And he didn't stop the ride. So he yelled at him again. And, and he had it. And we saw her get hit repeatedly. And she was flung around. Like, like my sister said, like a rag doll. And I don't have a clear memory of this. I just remember the relief. And, oh, my God, she's laying down. And my sister said that we went and we grabbed her and we slid her out from under the ride.
And then they said, just keep a good eye out on her, you know, if there's any signs of, you know, vomiting or dizziness or anything like that, and then to bring her right back. I do remember when I was up on the, the, the platform where she had been flung out that the operator was a young guy, and he came around, and um, he was crying and holding his head and shaking his head and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <sighs> And what me and my sister saw and my husband saw and, and, and the kids in the other car, they actually, they hit her and rolled over her as they were passing and they saw her. And Mitchell in the car, that was the guy sitting next to Leah that managed to stay in. He only stayed in because his friend held on to him, Chandler held on to him. So she was laying on the deck and, and the other cars on the ride were going over her. My husband and... Mitchell saw her get hit by two cars in the head from their angle. I couldn't see her head from my angle, but then I saw her body get hit and flung around by the oncoming cars as she landed flat on her back. But she was still halfway under the cars, and she was dazed, and she was just instinctively, I guess, trying to sit up. But had she sat up fully, the oncoming cars would have smashed her face on, do you know what I mean, right mm-hmm. in her head. But luckily, she, whether her arm was weak or whatever, she couldn't. She kept falling back, and that's and I was yelling at her to lie down, lie down. And then she told me afterwards that it registered to her. She heard me and my other daughters and, I'd say, my family friend, the three of them were in the next ride. Yeah, they saw her. They rode over her. These cars go in a circle and flip upside down at the same time. So they rode over her, so they knew. They were all crying and screaming. And my daughter told me, and the kids in the car told me afterwards, that when the operator was uh, trying to do their belt, he was having trouble. They said it took him a while, and they heard him mumble something like, good, or I don't know. They couldn't hear the rest of what he said, but he was having trouble. And they noticed straight away that it was loose, and it was getting loose every time. I do have another photo where it shows one of the young men holding his head in the ride because they had already banged heads because the belt was coming loose. And what have you heard from the park? We wanted to go find out what happened because we didn't know if it was operator error at that point or if it was a defective machine. So we wanted to go and find out what happened. So we went and met with the the manager and then um, a Mr. Jelly, I think he said he was the owner of the park, was there as well. And he told us they did an inspection themselves of the machine and that the provincial inspector came and he inspected the machine and that the ma- machine seems to be fine. And he said the operator said he did everything he was supposed to do too. And so I, I said to him, I said, well, Clearly, you know, she fell out. She was flung out, so something happened. And he told me that 70% of the time, it's the person riding the rides. They did something. But, of course, he was quick to assure me that, no, I'm not saying that it was your daughter that did that. But he gave me no answer. He didn't say he was sorry. He offered me a pass to go to Sands Pit. And when I said no... He offered me a pass to Shining Waters, and I said no. But there wasn't a sorry. There's no way that you can undo that belt or do something. And what person in their right mind is going to do that in that kind of ride to endanger themselves? Clearly, there was a problem. And from what I can glean, it was the operator. He, he was crying, and he kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and he said it was all my fault. And he's only a young guy. If he was 16... He was barely 16, and I did give him a hug because I'm a mother, and I I, I tried to think what he was feeling after experiencing that and knowing he was the one running the ride, and then he indicated to me that it was only his third day at work. So when my husband and I went to the park the next day, so he asked to see their training log, and it wasn't a very detailed log, but it indicated that the young boy was trained on two rides and apparently for about 20 minutes on the ride and then they're just left to to take care of it and while i i feel it was the young boy's actions that caused it i feel more that it was sands pits training 
and putting people's lives in the hands of these young kids and not giving them enough training or it matters if the belt is latched. That's somebody's life. I could have lost my daughter. Mitchell, he could have came flying out and died. My kids saw it all. I'll never get the image of what I saw out of my head when I close my eyes. It's there. It, it is miraculous that, that she wasn't injured more than she was when I hear this story, but it sounds like you still have um, a lot of questions about the incident. Will, will you be pursuing answers, or do you want to just put this behind you? I don't want this to happen to anybody else. So I would like to know that Sands Pit is training people in a more responsible manner. You know, not 20 minutes on a ride, and you're a young, immature kid, you know. So I I don't know what we're doing right now. I just know I don't want that to happen to anybody else. I guess that's why I'm talking to you, too. So we still haven't come to terms with how we all feel. Like, we're still reeling. You know, we stayed in PEI trying to make the best of it, not knowing what. I would have came home the very next day. But the kids all needed, I think, to be together, the other two boys that were in the ride, and try to forget and be occupied. But now that they're home, I know it's going to be different. Well, I'm sorry what your family went through. I'm glad Leah is um, okay physically and and. Thank you for for speaking with us about this. Okay, then. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Joan Forrest's daughter, Leah, was thrown from a ride at the Sandspit Amusement Park in Cavendish last week. Matthew Jelly is president of Sandspit Entertainment. We've reached him in Cavendish. Hello. Hello. So how do you explain what happened here? You know, we're still conducting a review of it, and we've met with the provincial ride inspector, and we've done our own review. Um, you know, in the amusement industry, unfortunately, there's always an inherent risk, and uh, we do our very best to minimize that, but uh, incidents do happen, and in this case, we're very thankful uh, that the uh, the outcome was as it was, where there's no serious injury. So you're conducting your own review, but we are hearing uh, from the family on what, on what they saw and heard, and, and uh, one thing they said was that the operator appeared to be struggling uh, with with the belt, uh, the, the, the safety belt. Is it possible there was a problem with that? Um, certainly not in our opinion and in the opinion of the provincial ride inspector who attended the next day. Uh, there's no evidence to uh, to back that assertion. Um, the the belt is is there and and is uh, is operating fine. How often do you inspect it? Our rides are inspected every morning by our staff. They're also inspected annually by our insurance company and by the provincial ride inspector. And then our staff are doing consistent uh, checks throughout the day uh, any time if there was even a single seat belt not functioning correctly or whatever they would alert the maintenance staff and, and it would be dealt with. But if the operator was struggling to to attach it or, or secure it, it mm-hmm. looks like there was a problem. There's no evidence of that. So who's at fault there do you think? Well uh, what I'm saying is, is that there's nothing from our end to indicate that there was a problem with the belt itself. Anytime there's an incident there's a, a list of contributing factors uh, potentially uh, mechanical error, employee error, or sometimes customer behavior. And, uh, you know, we're still working to uh, to finalize our review of this. The family was told it was the operator's third day on the job and that he had only 20 minutes of training on this particular ride. Is that standard for your park? I'm not quite sure where that came from as far as the length of training. Um, it was in the, the log, uh, apparently. The log indicated that the, the days of the training, it doesn't indicate the length of the training. So I would I would challenge that, and I'm not trying to be defensive, but I'm trying to stick to the facts here. I mean, an, an incident happened. That is regrettable. Uh, to place the operator at blame or uh, somebody else, I think, is uh, is speculative. Our training methods and procedures exceed the CSA requirement. They exceed the provincial requirement. Uh, we work very hard to make sure our staff are well-trained and uh, good operators of the ride. So how much training would he have received for, the, for this ride? So traditionally with an operator, on their first day, uh, they're, they're taken through the procedures of the park and the general um, the employee handbook, which includes about four to five pages on safety. They're given a copy of that, and they're often given a copy of that prior to their first day of work. 
that's reviewed uh, and a, you know a walkthrough of the park. They're then trained on a on a ride for that their first shift and for that day, and that's under the supervision of both management and a, and a senior park staff person. And then on a particular ride after that, it would depend on the ride itself. It would depend on the experience of the operator. And if there was an issue during the training, they may be removed. So you're confident in the amount of training that you're providing to your employees? As I said, uh, we have 32 years of history. I've been involved for 26 years. 21 years of that is a senior level. Uh, we entertain uh, you know, many thousands of guests every year, and they take many rides each. Uh, through that time, we've had an excellent record, and one of the main reasons is the seriousness of which our staff, management, and maintenance staff place on safety. We regret that an incident occurred. We will do everything we can and, and continue to do everything we can to prevent them. But, uh, you know, I'm very confident in our staff and the work we do. The family says that they want an apology from the park and have yet to receive one. What are you prepared to do for the family? Well, I, I would certainly encourage the family to contact us as as they did originally, and, and I'm not sure what's happened since then. Uh, the evening of the incident, uh, we met with them, and the next day we called to follow up, and they indicated they were en route to the park. We took them through the ride. We showed them the latching mechanisms. We went through the training logs with them. We went through the procedures with them. Uh, we did express our regret at the incident, and we told them if they needed anything else to call us. And uh, since then, we have not been contacted by the family. So you said you expressed regret, but she says that she didn't hear the words, I'm sorry. You know, in our in our case, we certainly expressed that we were disappointed in the incident, that we were doing everything we can. Uh, we had called in the provincial ride inspector. They spoke with the provincial ride inspector. Yes, we are sorry that an incident occurred. We are sorry anytime anybody uh, has a disappointing experience at the park. We, do, we are in this business to provide fun. And uh, any time there's an injury, um, it's uh, certainly difficult for, for all of us. It's, it's not... Uh, it's not something we want to see happen. So, no, I'm sorry it happened. But we are doing everything we can to prevent these incidents uh, in the past and in the future. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Matthew Jelly is president of Sandspit Entertainment. If you have a comment on this story, you can call our talk back line and leave a message, 1-800-565-5463. Send an email to marnoon at cbc.ca, or you can find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for CBC Maritime Noon.